welcome to Toad TV. I am Mary Beth. I'm Helen. And we are the Creative Minds, Hands and Minds, see, no, <laughs> Creative Hands and Minds behind Toad Hollow where we dye yarn and make project bags. We're going to have a sign. You know yeah. how they have the, you know, 365 days without an accident? <laughs> One day. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Um... We have, again, spent the day dying. We have one more day of dying. One <laughs> more day that we have to, and then this whole big order will be done, and we can get it out the door. Um, and I'm very happy about that. Um, I'm sounding a little bit scratchy today because I just had a coughing fit. But other than that, everything is because good with us. Because she swallowed something wrong. Right. Um, not for any other reason. No, we are both not yeah. good. We're Feeling all, pretty good. We're like a week and a half into our quarantine from... Uh, being with people, right? So um, I think not cool. we yeah. hope we're going to be okay. We're we're doing okay. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> uh, we wanted to come to you today. Um, I meant to look this up. Kristen Bell put up on Instagram a letter that she got from her daughter's teacher or her daughter's principal, and I just thought it was so great because um, it was all about homeschooling and. Um, not feeling the pressures of homeschooling. Right. Mm -hmm. Mary Beth and I are not home with children. Oh, gratefully. <laughs> so um, we just have the furry children and they don't need homeschooling. Right. Um, so we do feel for the people, but Mary Beth is a, an ex teacher. So yeah, I was um, an elementary school teacher for about a dozen years. So and I went to graduate school for it. So I do have some, some kind of background in it. Um, but um, the, the whole thing was that um, you, if you don't, if you don't feel confident homeschooling your children, don't. That's the thing, you know, because Everything is stressful right now, and it's only going to get more stressful if you're trying to figure out how to do new math and that sort of thing. And kids are going to pick up on this, much like our pets. They pick up on everything. Yeah. So you're just, they're going to be stressed anyway just because of the overall stress that's going on. And um, the having you get really stressed and upset trying to teach them is not going to make it any easier. So what he was saying was instead of doing that, Cuddle up and read. The best thing you can do is read with your kids. Read to your kids. Even if they're in kindergarten or preschool, you can still read to them. And it doesn't have to be picture books. It can be novels. His whole thing was that um, do things with them. Paint, make a puzzle, build a fort, cook. Cooking with them is a great way to yeah. learn math and fractions and that sort of thing without even realizing it. it was kind of like Sesame Street. My mother always said that Sesame Street was you were being educated without your prior consent or knowledge because it just sinks in, you know? And my mom's big thing was reading Me. to us. Yeah. We read every single night. And we read, she read to us, I can remember sitting on the floor of the hallway with our backs up against the wall and she was reading to us Treasure and Island. During the winter, I mean, we lived in an old, century-old... Run-down. Run-down house, drafty. And during the winter, there was a hot water pipe that ran across the middle of the kitchen floor. <laughs> in the winter, we would sit in a line yeah. on the hot water pipe. Uh, we could keep warm, and she would read to all of us. And, I mean, we were going from, you know, mid Like... Um, eight, nine, yeah. all the way down like to... Like mid-school, middle school, two. down to like infants. Right. Um, there's six of us. There's 15 years in between the oldest and the youngest. Um, so there were just all age groups. And she was reading... She read the classics. Yeah. I mean, I mean we read um, The Lost Prince. Yeah. Um, we read The Wind in the Willows. I remember she, she uh, yeah. said that my brother, who is 10 months older than I am... And I got so, so upset because when Molly left his house and didn't think he was going to make it back again and he was leaving his home and it just, it destroyed us. The two of us were crying. Right. Um, but, and I mean, we were two and three when she was reading this to us and it doesn't have to have pictures. Children get intrigued by the stories and her whole thing was language. You're immersing them in language so that they will understand things without realizing that and they understand it. a sense of, you know, 
uh, camaraderie with siblings and family because I mean I remember I, I'm not a, I don't have my memory doesn't work in that I have like very clear memories of childhood or anything like that people remember much more than I do um, but that's the kind of thing I remember right is us sitting there and then you know when we were older and reading on our own my dad reading to my little brothers um, yeah, because my dad wasn't around when we were really right. little. We're the oldest, and he had just graduated from law school, so he was, you know, just starting out as an attorney. So that for us, when we were that age, he was working all the right. time. And my mom was the one that read to us. But um, as my two brothers are the youngest, and by the time we got down to their age, dad was it wasn't quite so. Stressful. Stressful. Yeah. So he was at home at night to read to them, and I remember him reading. Uh, yeah, I mean, he was reading them the Roald Dahl books, and um, I mean, I'm, I remember that night. Go to bed, jolly ground. Oh, yeah, and um, The Lion and the Witch in the Wardrobe, he read yeah. them that, you know, I mean, so... And my dad was such a great... I mean, my mom was a good reader, too, but my dad was such a great reader. Yeah, that, that oh. deep, rumbly yeah. voice, you know, so... And my dad was a very calming person. Yes. So just sitting with dad was... Was good. Yeah. So what we thought was, we have some books here. We don't have nearly all the books that we had, but we we, we picked a couple of books. These are kind of uh, most of them are older because let's face it, we're older. Right. But um, they're still good. Yeah. You know, they still work. Um, and they still hold up. So we thought we'd show you a couple of them and talk about you know some of the books that we loved. Uh, to have read to us when we were growing or up. Or reading. Or so, reading, so yeah. So if you have readers who are just, you know, looking for something to read. Yeah. Um, I do I do realize that um, after they get to a certain age point and they're into video games, some of these may feel a little dated. But um, w especially with younger ones, they're sitting with you and you're reading to them. Yeah. They don't care. They really don't care. So, okay. One of the first ones I want to do is... A Bear Called Paddington. As you can see, this is a very well-loved book. The back is all torn. <laughs> However, um, I have a very close spot in my heart for Paddington Bear, and this book is so much fun. It's about a bear who gets lost, and he gets found by a family, and he keeps getting into trouble because things just happen to him. And then you can watch the movie. Yeah. So, so this is a great, great book to read. And it's not terribly long. And they're chapters, so that you read a chapter a night. It's a great thing to yeah. do. So I love this one. Okay. The second one I picked up was, this is uh, Little Eddie by Beverly Cleary. These, I think, may seem kind of dated. But again, if they're little, they don't know. Yeah. You know? Um, I would start with B is for Betsy because that's the one that first introduces this group of kids um, but there's Betsy and Eddie and Eddie's dog. Um, I think it's Henry. Uh, no, Henry Huggins is another one. Um, anyway, the, it's a great series of books and just about life in small towns and that kind of thing and kids and things that they did, you know? And it, it, you might find some ideas of things that um, you could do with them. Yeah. Um, I remember when I was nine my mom threw a birthday party for me and we thought about games that we could do with everybody and we found some really kind of old-fashioned games to do like um walnut cups that you had to sail across the bathtub and marble hunts and things like that things that weren't necessarily um current when i was there growing up well, still kind of, but um, no, they not were, not even. I yeah, mean, like the walnut cups. That wasn't. But it was kind of thing yeah. that you know, it's it's something interesting because you don't do it all the right. time, so that you're like, ooh, what, let's try that type yeah. of thing, you know. So so there was that one. Okay, do you want to do any of these? No, you're much better. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I'll just sit and look beauty. I'll, I'll be your pretty assistant. Okay. This is The Railway Children by E. Nesbitt. Okay, you can tell by the cover. This is definitely not our first time. <laughs> However, this is such a good book. It's a really good book. And there's a movie that goes with it. I think there are several movies that go with it. Um, but it's, it's just, it's a really, really good book. And it actually holds up well. Um, 
So the, the, I mean, this is, there's that, there's the, the boxcar children. I was going to say, I remember the, the boxcar box children. children. We would go, when we go to the library, and it would be, you know, is the next one in the series available? And yeah. so excited about the boxcar children. I loved reading those. So that's, that's another one. Also by E. Nesbitt is the Five Children and It series that, um, again... It's just, I mean, they're slightly dated, but yeah, still but really, really, good. really fun. Yeah. There's a I mean, magical, they were dated when we were reading them. So. Yeah, a magical turn to yeah. them. Um, this is Oversea Understone by Susan Cooper. It's uh, the Darkest Rising series. I love this, this series so much. I actually reread it every couple of years. Um, it all is based loosely around... It's the powers of the dark versus the powers of the light, and... Um, the Merlin shows up in it and King Arthur it's all about you know King Arthur's reign and that kind of thing and it's just it's really 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 good <laughs> love these books um and then I have the Lloyd Alexander this is not the one that I read um but the Chronicles of Prydain this is the book of three which is the first one and there's a series of five or six in this it's all about um an assistant pig keeper who um, actually is more than a pig keeper, and everybody calls him the pig keeper, and he's got hidden depths. And it's really good. Everybody it's was really, too. really good. He's got, there's um, Henwen, who is the pig. He's an oracular pig, and um, so he's the pig is an oracle and tells the future, but you've got to be able to read her signs and that kind of thing. And there's the horned king. I mean, it's just, it's so good. Yeah. It's so good. Again, powers of good versus powers of bad it's just a really good fun series and fantasy yeah um and then i also pulled the land of stories this is chris uh culfer's books he was on glee um he's an actor who was on glee um and he has a whole series of books and they're based around fairy tales um but it's really kind of fun I found it a little bit simple for me as an adult. It's definitely geared more towards middle school, but it's great because it's it's got all the fairy tales in it, so that you um you're touching on things that you know. Yeah. You know, like all of a sudden, uh, Red Riding Hood is there or something like that. So it's it was a fun book to read. I enjoyed it. So that was what I pulled. Um, can you think of any others? Uh, we were talking about Peter and the Star Catchers by Dave Barry and um, Ridley Pearson. Ridley Pearson. Um, that one's really, really good. Those are really, really fun. And those, um, what struck me the most when I read those as an adult was how much they were written to be read aloud. Yes. Those chapters are short. There are fun characters. And you, as the, re the adult reader, are going to have a, fun a blast reading it. Yeah. Um, and so, you can definitely tell when Ridley Pearson wrote the chapter <laughs> and when Dave Barry wrote the chapter, because what they would do is they would each write chapters and send them back and forth to each other, and you definitely know when Dave Barry does yeah. it, because he's got the comedic part. Um, but but it's just, it's all based around um, Peter Pan, so, um, and there's a whole series of them. Yeah. And they're just, I mean... They even made them into a Broadway play. Yeah. Um, so that... Uh, if you've got um, young boys or even girls, I mean, it's both, except for both, but um, boys, would it would be something that would be fun for boys. Yeah, because so. you, you get into it and there's black stash. And, yeah. You know, it's, that, that's, a, the, that's a really yeah. good one to read aloud. Um, didn't we give that to Larry? Uh, no, we gave it to Ray. No, no, no. Didn't we send a copy down to Larry? I think we did. To, I'm to pretty read. sure yeah. that we sent um, one down for him to read to the boys. And then there are all the roll dolls. Yes. Um, the BFG, the witches. Those hold up. Those hold up really, really well. The James and the Giant Peach. Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Um, yeah, no, those are really, really and, good. And um, E.B. White. Yeah. So, yeah. with Charlotte and Stuart Little. Also, um, you can't go wrong with The Secret Garden, although can't make it through. I always <laughs> had to have my assistant... Uh, classroom assistant read the last couple <laughs> chapters because I couldn't make it through without crying. Um... And uh, also The Little Princess. Yes. So. We love those yeah. books. You can tell because we've died yarn for them. <laughs> so, 
So those are some of our suggestions for read alouds yeah. to your kids. You know, um, the big thing is it doesn't have to have, I mean, a lot of these do have some pictures. It doesn't have to have a lot of pictures, you know, and it doesn't have to have be a simple um, picture book. Right. You can, at all ages, you can start reading them all types of books and you'd be surprised at how much they pick up, how much they enjoy. And how much they just look forward to spending time with you. Yeah. So um, it's so. a quiet time. I think that was one of the reasons my mother did it. It yeah. calmed everybody down Before and then bed. we went to bed. Yeah. You know, you read for about 20 minutes or so and then everybody went to bed. But uh, yeah. And there were a couple of times where we begged her yeah. to read another chapter because we were leaving, leaving off at a very, very key point. Yeah. So, so um, and also, you know, as far as this whole time that we are living through right now, it's your kids, you want your kids to remember it as, um, you remember that time when, right? not, you know, oh my God. Yeah, no, that's such yeah, a good, it, that's such a good thing. You know, it you do, be, you know, when they're grown up, remember that time when we all got stuck inside and, and we all sat in red. Right. So yeah. Hate these glasses. Okay. <laughs> We're having a very hate hate relationship with our glasses right now. Um, okay. Yeah. So that was our thing. All right. So we hope you all have a good rest of the day. Um, if you want to leave some suggestions for books to read to kids in the comments, that would be great because uh, there may be parents out there that are looking for this kind of thing. Plus, we so, have nephews. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Yes. And we will talk to you tomorrow. Okay.